back. Random TV reviews. Your girl and I. And it's your boy. Alright, we're gonna apologize. We're not gonna come in with a premiere on this week. Time is not of the essence right now. Mm -hmm. But before we get started, we would love to give a major shout out to all of those people that came through and celebrated my baby's birthday on hey, last week. I so appreciate we, it, man. We had a super chat from Will Lee. Yeah. We had a PayPal from Chris. I'm not gonna put out everybody's full names because that's between us and them. Yeah. Um, cash apps from Reggie, Natasha, Terrell, and Stacy. I appreciate it. I appreciate so, the love, y'all. Yeah, and if you will watch our Life With Us TV channel, we will put our vlog out about next week. You'll actually see what we did with that money. Hey. So, I think you all will be well pleased. All right, so let's get into this. It's episode, no, season four, episode so nine. nine. Stare at the same fires. Have we ever been lying? Huh, we definitely been staring at the same fire. Oh, my God. And For the so, longest. This is, this is my show. This is my baby right here. Yeah. But at the same time, I have become so mentally and emotionally drained hmm. watching this show. And then I had to remind myself that I knew what I signed up for when I started doing this. Yeah, exactly. The first episode, <laughs> Ernest died. Yep. So we can't get any more depressing than that. Episode one, Daddy died. Set the whole tone for the whole freaking show. Yep. But Ava, I'm going to need you to give us some, some successes and some triumphs. She be giving us successes followed by two losses. <laughs> and then a success, it. then three losses. And then two successes and ten losses. I can't even. I can't even. Like the old <laughs> folks say, you take one step forward and get knocked two steps That's back. back. <laughs> so we're going to get right into it. We're not going to talk about everything, but we're going to try to group everything together. Hit it. Quit it. Let y'all enjoy y'all weekend. Let's get ready to come up. And we do the same. Because my birthday is on what? Sunday. Mm -hmm. Hey. Still Leo. You going to let them know how old you going to be on Sunday, Mike? Oh, it's not a secret. My milestone was last year. So hey. I'm 41. I'll be 41 hey. on Sunday. Ain't a whole lot of y'all be saying black don't crack. But some of y'all, y'all be watching it HD. Yeah. But I, I've aged gracefully. Boom. But anywho, um, hey. let's get into... Nova. Okay, y'all know that it was revealed that she had a cousin on her mama's side that's still alive or whatever. So she decided to reach out and visit this cousin. During the visit, Nova began to realize that a lot of the skits she thought she knew, she, she didn't, really didn't, didn't know. know. Yeah. So Nova went in there with the know with all that. Her hmm. mother actually regretted her life hate you know not necessarily hated her life but she did what she had to do based off of the decisions that she made for oh, having her yeah yeah and the cousin was like baby you got that all you got twisted all twisted man. no you and ralph angel were your mother's everything yeah it may not have been the life that she chose for herself but don't don't get it twisted she loved y'all yeah. she loved what she produced and she loved Ernest. So we get to talking about that. Nova has learned through this lady that she comes from a family of female healers. Yeah. So that gift that you have, it has been passed down from generation to generation. And the lady, when she, see, the lady was shady. Soon as the as Nova walked up, she said, you know, I don't really deal with a whole lot of people. Yeah. Because everybody's spirits ain't right. And they ain't, y'all ain't clean. But, but you, you family. family. So basically, she told you your spirit is bucked up, but because you're family, I'm going to let you in. That's what she told her in so many words. That's that backhanded stuff. Yeah. Well, come to find out that this lady was actually one who accepted her calling and come to find out like her father wasn't, wasn't cool with her accepting this as a healer. And the only thing I could think in my mind is back in those days, Jesus was everything. And yeah. anything outside of the blood of Jesus was considered witchcraft. The Buddhist. devil. Yeah. So it's the it, devil. You better get that demon uh -huh. out of here. So she ended up leaving and she went to the um to Haiti and different places mm -hmm. like that where she was able to study her craft, learn about her gift and her calling, and then she came back later on. But she kind of came in like a thief in the night. Yeah. Nobody knew she was there. And Nova's the mom kept that secret all the way up until she died. So this lady was actually able to come in, live her life, kind of be secluded from everybody. I don't know if that's what she wanted, but that's a little dangerous. And and I thought it was powerful too when she was saying asking um asking her did did her mama accept the calling to be the healer. 
Because, you know, a lot of us don't accept that kindness. And she was like, yeah, she accepted it in her own way. And which I appreciate that because you don't always, people, when you got a calling on your life, people want to put you in that church box, which is cool, but not everybody is meant to be in that in church walls. box. I mean, because we know that real ministry is on the outside of the four walls. You know what I'm saying? So it's like just because you can speak real good, that don't mean you're supposed to be a preacher. Right. Or if you got healing, that don't mean that you're supposed to be a healer in the church. You might be supposed to be a healer in the hospital or healer in Haiti somewhere. So, or in the yeah. grocery store. So I like that Trudy didn't let the folk put her in the box, and because of that, she was excluded from everybody. So, Well, hmm. come to find out, Nova had to admit to the cousin, too. You know, I kind of accepted mine in my own, own way. way too, she yeah. said, you just like your, your mama. mama. <laughs> um, so their interaction was was pretty. It was good. It was pretty cool. It reminded yeah. me a whole lot of my family. So I thought that the interaction was like creepily cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you would have to be from the outlets to, yeah. to understand what that feels like when the ancestors talk to you and they talk to you in code. They shaded you at the same time. Yeah. But at the same time, they're giving up family secrets that you be sitting there like. Yeah. So, but what was powerful though was because you know we kept on wondering why Nova kept having all these dreams. That's what I was going for at the farm. It was like, why she keep on seeing her mama at the farm? What's going on? And come to find out, her mama been buried down. It's like, what? So, the whole time we we thought that mama was cremated and her ashes that, that was tossed to the Street wind. Baptist Church in the back, <laughs> and she, she out there on the land. Not unless the cousin lied, but I don't know why she would lie. Nah, she got no reason to lie. And then we were sitting here talking about it last night when we watched it. Stanley was like, um, maybe that's the body that cross. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, um, freaking her daddy was burning Trudy back there when she saw when she was, when she was young and maybe I Prosper, so. I mean, Prosper told her he was, he was burning his past. The stuff. So, but even if, it was even. Good. But even if it was her, he wouldn't fit in the tail over that because it wasn't his place. Well, mom, the, the mama won't dead not unless she died that night and they buried her that I, night. I don't know. We don't know at what point in but time that was. But lie. Yeah, they lie. All the time. They either lie or they sweep it underneath the rug. A lie. <laughs> and then we'll tell you, then we'll tell you, baby, I didn't lie to you. I was protecting your feelings, baby. <laughs> By lying to me. I was looking out for your well So I can cry later? Like, no, you won't, man. You tap that from me now. I'm running around here all bucked up trying to get my life together because you wouldn't tell me the truth. I'm spending all this money on cashless and going to the pastor, going to the church, getting hands laid on me, and all you could have did was told me the truth, uh -huh. and I'd be all right. That Uncle Leroy ain't my real uncle. I was like, what? <laughs> that ain't my dad. That ain't my mama. What y'all going to tell me that? I could have slept with my sister. I could have slept with my brother or my cousin because y'all won't keep all these goddamn secrets. And everybody knew except me. And it's still going on. We still looking at the same files. If that's you, raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> and repent. <laughs> and if you a victim of it, raise two, two hands. hands. God do it. So within that interaction the um the cousin that actually gave nova a book of her mother's past healing recipes and different things like that and i thought that was really cool too so nova was able to walk away with a whole lot more information and a whole lot of reflection yeah going on all right Let i knew she was gonna pitch me off this episode right she pisses me off every week ever since <laughs> jimmy dale came she has been pissing me off every week. Well, this week, she decides that she's going to have a talk with um, Hollywood after she made him a nice dinner. And even he peeped He was like, okay, what's the occasion? What's, what's going on? You happy? You sitting there? And then first yeah. I was like, is she trying to poison you? Because she sure ain't fixed her nothing. <laughs> so she went on and told Hollywood, listen, that day that you beat Jimmy Dale up, I saw something in you that scared me. Basically, what she was telling Hollywood was what he did was very familiar to how she saw Jimmy Dale get out of control and beat someone else. And the fact of it is, Jimmy Dale did not start off by beating her. He started off by beating someone that was trying to pursue her. Yeah. And then it turned to her. So in her mind, it is very parallel of what could be coming down the street. 
But it's all mental. Yeah. It's all because she hasn't gotten healed from her past. And as Hollywood was saying, I understand. I get it now. But what can I do to fix it? And she said, there's nothing that you can do. I have to do the work for myself. And I'm like, that is why it is so important before you go into a relationship with someone else that you get completely healed from the skit that your pat your other partner has done to you. Exactly. Because oh yeah, because it'll be something as simple as you're sitting at the dinner table and they start slurping their food and it takes you back to he used to slurp his food right before he would beat the hell out of me. And every time this person slurp slurp their food, you go into a oh my God, it's about, oh, to, it's happen. about to happen. No. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get healed from that because just because that happens with that doesn't mean that that's gonna be the next step in your relationship too. But I do like how Hollywood has accepted how she has perceived things and how she's processing things, and he even wants to start like a like a group session where men can get together and speak about and their feelings about kind of stuff. because yeah. men don't actually have that. They get a, get together and talk about sports and women and all their cars and stuff like that. But when it comes to talking about real skit, they really don't have a that's safe true. platform to do that at. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why you have so many men that usually congregate at the bar, or congregate this place and that place. Because that's where you get the kind of the realest men talks, if you would will. Yeah, because last time you went to Mona Lounge, you said the bros were just talking to you and just telling everybody business and theirs. <laughs> but that was actually was a good talk, though. No, but that's what I'm saying. Like yeah, that was a good talk. Those are the platforms that men use to get their skin mm -hmm. out, but it's not and always I, and, the healthiest. And, and me, I don't care what the platform is, just as long as that we can get together and be real and talk. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's that's what we definitely need. But I was like, Hollywood is nowhere near on the platform as Jimmy Dale. And the circumstances were totally different. Jimmy Dale came to your house and were disrespecting you on your land. And if he wouldn't have did that, then what would then have you would have said he didn't protect he me. He didn't protect me. He was yeah. a weak man. Yeah. But then that he don't be so. It's almost, it's almost like he, he damn he did, and damn he didn't. Facts. Yeah. So yeah. I yeah. So Unva, you don't make me hook Hollywood up with one of my aunts. One of my us lost her husband about seven years ago. Hmm. She read Because she could get married Say we'll, again. we'll float her your way. Hello, he like him a little older too. She yeah. ain't ready to retire, but she don't look like she's 60-something. My aunt still look like she in her forwardness. Don't get it twisted. Hollywood, call me. <laughs> so, let's get on Micah. Micah and Kiki. Kiki came over to the house, right? Let's go ahead and bust um, them out the way real quick. And I want to hit it, look in her eyes. Ever since she thought that he had got burnt up in the... She been ready to give him the cooch. Well, she came over to the house and when she realized that um Charlie wasn't there, you knew Charlie wasn't gonna be there. Even on a good day, Charlie wasn't gonna be there. Yeah. She told Michael she she was ready. And and this is the time that they should do it. But Charlie had I said, what about prom? At first it was a prom. <laughs> you cause you told him what they were playing with. You told him you was gonna block up at prom. Yeah. So they they had to try to Yeah, yeah, they, they did a back door on me. They Slid. Did. You shouldn't tell people what you trying to do, <laughs> they will block you. <laughs> so Micah wants before he takes Kiki's virginity, he wants to make sure that this is what you really want to do. Yeah. And I appreciate him as a young boy really Really making sure that she's sure that she's just not in the moment yeah. and that she's sure this is what she wants to do. Right, so over there at Ralph Angels, Michael went to go visit him, right? Because he wants some advice on whether or not going forth with this is the right thing to do. <laughs> I can appreciate that he went to talk to his uncle because yeah. this whole, since we've been doing the show, Michael really hasn't had the best relationship with men when it comes to actually trying to any man that actually would take him under their wing and really guide them the right way. And I would say that Ralph Angel failed. Yeah. In my opinion, Ralph Angel failed. Now, let me explain. <laughs> he basically told him, you know, listen, however you feel right now, you need to go ahead and go with that gut feeling. So if you feel like you and Kiki should make that next step, go ahead and do so. I really don't have much of an issue with that because we are living in 2019 okay i get it everybody loses their virginity yeah. you know whatever and you can um, pretty much you can't stop it they gonna so do it anyway <laughs> this is this is where my problem comes in at because i'm a realist i realize that just because you tell the kid not to they're going to do it yeah but 
I don't feel like Ralph Angel had the talk with him as an uncle. Now we know that Micah isn't a virgin. Micah has <laughs> he got dangling pics all up and through LA. <laughs> but why didn't you speak to your nephew about, okay, if you're going to do this, can you make sure that because she is a virgin, more than likely she's not on any kind of birth control. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you strap up, make sure that you do this, make sure you do that. Yeah. Make, you know, really giving it to him real raw, like only another man probably could. Yeah, because you don't want to have no babies Yeah, like I had young. Yeah, and, and you get ready to go to college, to go to college so what if she yeah. gets pregnant? Mm -hmm. You know, so I really felt like Ralph Angel failed in that yeah. talk with his nephew. It was kind of like, go get yours, boom. Yeah. And what? Just me, how did y'all feel about it? Yeah, I felt I, I felt the same way because I, I know a whole lot of people who could have, who was going to be somebody, but they end up getting somebody knocked up. And it know, just railroaded And them. it just railroaded it, and so they couldn't really go to college and stuff because they had a baby to take care of. Yeah. So they did what they needed to do. But now so now these days some of the parents will kick in and, and help, but that ain't fair either, you know. Right. They raised theirs. Yeah, so they raised theirs and theirs gone. So yeah, so if you young on here, strap up. Yeah. Or keep it in your pants. Yeah. And we know that whole thing you don't feel the same, but keep it in your pants. Because mm -hmm. HIV don't feel the same. I'm herpes. No. Nope. I'm syphilis, gone real. Say you wake up the next day and be burning. Burn up. <laughs> you know. So we want everybody to be safe yeah. these days. Safe sex. Yeah. All right, so let's get, let's get on Charlie. I don't like, hopefully this was a one-time thing, so I'm hoping that Ava doesn't turn Charlie into an alcoholic that's drowning her sorrows in booze. I mean, Charlie was already a drunker anyway. She was a wine drink. Well, she, no, well, she would no. bring that brown liquor with, uh, what you call it? My with Remy. With Remy. I forgot. With, with Jacob. Mama, they had the brown look over there when he came over the house. She was an occasional drinker. Tonight, <laughs> on she the got, field. She got bent. Tonight, <laughs> on the field. She was, <laughs> she was bucked up and didn't even care. <laughs> so Charlie is over at the bar. And it looks like she was, I don't know where they had it. <laughs> it had slot machines behind her. It looked like she was at a hotel. I was all kinds of confused. Yeah. Maybe she was at the casino. Charlie was doing martinis, cosmos, shots. She was doing the most. Just throwing them back. So the bartender, you know, as she, he's talking to Charlie, he real, you know, she's let it slip up that she's running for cancel. He said in New Orleans, <laughs> he was like, you know You're what, like, you need you, to pump you need your brakes. Leave up out of here, man. He was like, the later it gets, the more people gonna come. Basically, I'm trying to save you. You are, you are wasted. Let me fix you some coffee so you can get your life back together. So none of this will be on the front pages of the newspaper in the mm. morning. Well, no, Charlie sat there all night. <laughs> and drank and drank. She said, and "Give drank, me another one." <laughs> now I blame the bartender because you're not supposed to overserve people. He overserved that lady all freaking night long. She never left that bar with them sunshades on, as if nobody was gonna recognize Charlie Bart all on <laughs> West. Um, now I wonder what is the overserve limit though. How would how would they, they really they're know? They're supposed to gauge it. They're supposed to gauge it. Now she over there leaned over there like there was sunshades on. That's the limit. <laughs> Where you, where you can no longer hold yourself up. Like, like the old people say, when you can't hold your lip up, that's the limit. It's time. It's time for you to go. So, so, she pretty much night had fallen and morning had came and she ended up getting herself together enough to call Micah, told Micah, listen, meet me at the Queen Sugar Mill um, office the next, um, to, later on today. Blah, 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 blah. Well, later on today came and, and she no Charlie. <laughs> so this would trip me out. Guess who? T oh, Michael, you need to get in that phone and you need to track that, track her and see where she at. Mr. Prosper, like what you know about that? What you know about that? Him yeah. and Genevieve up there, <laughs> being fresh. <laughs> Mr. Prosper got a new pepper his step. He must have uh -huh. shot up the club. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so he ended up tracking her and it was saying that she was somewhere in New Orleans and I was like okay so Michael is gonna get together and get her or get Hollywood somebody gonna go down there and get her of all people you know that you and your mama and your auntie are not 
on the same page right now. Why would you call your auntie to mm -hmm. go down there and look for her? Cause he's trying to get them back together. That ain't the way you do it. Well, you know, you know, Michael. What if she wasn't drunk? Cause the only way that she actually got a moment to get close enough to Charlie was because she was, she was blasted. Yep. So when when she showed up, first thing Charlie said, "Why are you here?" And she explained, "Your son." Sit me down here to look for you. I got you. I'm going to take you home and I'm going to put you in the bed. Well, Charlie really didn't have much of a choice. She got her up out there and when they got to the house, Nova put her in the bed. And Charlie muddled the words, why did you write that stuff in that book about me? Mm -hmm. I said, oh, Lord. Yeah. Hey. I said, don't, don't do it now. Don't do it. And for the first time. I actually felt like Nova got what she did. Yeah. And she was like... I think she got what she did the last episode. But I think but this she, episode was really, really confirming that she got it. Yeah, she bucked up. Mm -hmm. So, she told us, she said, I thought that I was helping. But actually, I was just trying to help myself. myself. And she climbed in the bed with her and Charlie just let Mom. it go. Yeah. Like, when you get that cry that comes deep from within your soul. Yeah. Boom. She let that thing out and she was crying her tail off. And I was like, Nova, look what you did, Dios. It's not all of that is you. Because a whole lot of that come from when she was, you remember, Whoop Davis on that basketball court. Yeah. When her son almost got killed by an officer. The Queen Sugar, the farmers. All of that came yeah. out in that cry. So all of it, won't you... But you gonna get it all, cause, cause they, yours hurts the worst. Cause yeah, I'm gonna say what hurts the worst is the person that was supposed to cover me exposed me. Yeah, you ripped the covers off of me and didn't even let me know, and didn't even give, give me a band aid. Yeah, just ripped it off and didn't act like you was doing me a favor. <laughs> I can't wait. Stella said, "You know what I feel." I, 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 I got, I, I did. I really got, I, I like when I see people really uh, see the error of their ways. <laughs> now, is she totally, totally sorry? I don't know, but I do know that there is some regret that's present. Oh, yeah, a lot of it. Because that article that she wrote about Charlie in that paper was powerful. Yeah. So, as we talk about the article, the next morning when Charlie got up to get ready to face her day, she had some tea waiting for her. She had a newspaper article on her um, countertop. And the newspaper article was written by Noah Bordelon. And she pretty much wrote that if she could take back everything that she said in this book, she would because she hurt her sister. Mm -hmm. She does not feel that way about her sister. Matter of fact, her sister would be very good for that, uh, for New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And that if she could be half of the woman that her sister is when she grows up, mm -hmm. she would be satisfied with yeah. that. And you could see Charlie just like, oh my God. Just messed her So up. she's trying to right her wrongs. Mm -hmm. And I and I love that she is doing it in a public platform because I believe in however you, you bucked up. Yeah, however you deliver it. Is how you fix it. Exactly. So what you're not going to do is embarrass me in public. But come in private and try to make that skit right. No, mm -hmm. no, no. We going right back out to the streets. And yep. you going to fix this in front of the same people that you messed up in front of. Hey. That's how I roll. That's how I roll too, man. So, okay. So, we, we're here. And this thing we know, we're going to move forward. This whole episode, you had Mr. Prosper and Miss Genevieve. They're trying to figure out a way to lift Charlie's spirits. But she had spirits. <laughs> and um, what they were trying to do was get together at Queen Sugar Mill, bring the community together, and kind of just celebrate Charlie. Let's pick up the pieces. Let's do this thing, right? So Micah goes to get Charlie. And Charlie was like, I ain't got it to give. I'm hungover. I ain't yeah. had no sleep. My head probably hurting. Speaking about that, she looked pretty good that next morning to be drinking all that liquor. She did, but she... <laughs> they ended up at Queen Sugar Mill and she walked in and was like, you know, what's going on? And in the midst of the ashes, mm -hmm. they had put together a nice little celebration for her. And Mr. Prosper was like, listen, we're going to rebuild whatever we have to do 
to pick ourselves up from this point on. We as a community, we're not going to let them win. We're not going to let them beat us down. Mm -hmm. We're going to pick our spirits up. We're going to band together and we're going to do this thing. And then Miss Genevieve started singing, I got a feeling. Yeah, everything's everything's going to be all, all right. I'm like, I come said, on okay. now, take us to church there. I said, all you need is a Hammond B3. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> so Charlie was looking around and she had tears and it was like, and Nova was there and nobody like nobody escorted was. her out. And I actually seen um, Unva smiling and I was mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe we're going to get maybe, out Maybe now. this is Nova's entryway back into her family. Okay. So we know it's going to come in in some kind of way. Yeah. So, but we knew it was going to be some kind of broken pieces that she was going to float in on. Cheating. To get her way back in. <laughs> so <laughs> but that was good. It oh. was oh no, no but oh yeah, that was powerful. Yeah, because one of the things I can say, I can I can sp speak from from black folk. We we sometimes don't know how to do that for our people. Sometimes you understand what I'm saying. So it's like we we good at take 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 and take, but when it comes time to appreciate, we, we lack. And I'm talking to myself at that because sometimes I like that people do 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 and do but sometimes you have to be able to show that appreciation back and Charlie been doing all this and most of the time the appreciation don't come until there's a tragedy so why did there have to be a tragedy happen for them to show Charlie that type of appreciation and I ain't seen none of them farmers there unless I miss them. I ain't seen none of them I ain't there. seen none of me yeah I ain't seen nothing there so I don't know why you know I said buck the farmers like two yeah uh -huh. like Two issues ago. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's yep. like that's like Ricky Smiley said, y'all can take that sugar cane and wipe your A with it. <laughs> oh Lord. So let's get on Dollar. This is where I'm gonna lose a whole bunch of y'all uh -huh. because y'all you know. always tell me that I'm hard as hell on Dollar and I am. <laughs> I am because as a person I told y'all like in season one, I don't know what case study Ava used. When she wrote this part for Dollar, but she has it spot on. Mm -hmm. Everything about an addict, that Dollar is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't, Ava has nailed it. There's no other way to say it. Yeah. Like to the point where you're looking at it as a person on the outside and I'm questioning, <laughs> is this girl okay? Yeah. Because she's playing the hell out of an, of an addict or mm -hmm. recovering addict. So... I'm a little shy, but anyway, um, <laughs> so we have Blue. Blue was with his mother, and he can't stop talking about his new best friend. His new best friend, Shawal. Shawal? Sure. And um, Doll is excited about him having this new friend until she realized that the new best friend is the daughter of Disha. Mm -hmm. Ra's new girl. Yep. So when she confronts um, Ralph Angel about it and he let her know, you know, the deets or whatever, she immediately got pissed off and was like, so she you knows just... who I am, but you didn't tell, tell me. me who I she know, was. No, 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 no. And Ralph Angel said, like, but Tumbo said, no, 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 no. You were the one who uh -huh. said that we don't need to talk about stuff like that. So because of that, I didn't tell you skip. That's right. But okay, that. Let's, let's go ahead with the crackhead manipulation. Yep. Number one. Okay. So she's in her feels. Granted, get it. And I get what she's saying as a, you know, you, you, even though you don't want to talk about stuff like that with your ex that you're trying to co-parent with, I probably would have still liked to have a little heads up that. That would be come, blindsided. Yeah. That if I come to the house and you, and you see somebody in the driveway, don't get, that's my new friend. He could have done that. Let's, no, know. no, no, no. She put on the line. <laughs> she said it very clear. I can't handle knowing who you going to be dating. So we not going to talk about it. <laughs> that's so what you she know, said? That's exactly what she said. So she ain't, he ain't had to tell her skit. I that was her word. Ralph Angel wanted to do that. He said, let's talk I about it. I can't argue with you about yeah, it. Yeah, he wanted to talk about it. But no, nah, she wanted to keep, she wanted to protect her heart. And so she walked up on the blind side. It, and now, and she, now, hurt. now the feelings hurt. Okay. So Dollar goes over there to go see Leo. Now that her tail is tucked between her legs, what she needs to do now is she needs to boost herself up. She's going to go over there to Mr. Leo, right? Yeah. So she gets over there and immediately I was like, are you 
you high, dog? Like, what's going on? The pitch of her voice was high. It was, <laughs> it was a lot going on. Well, Leo kind of, he was abrasive to me. I'm not even going to lie. Leo's not my favorite person in the world because I just think him and Dollar together just look like struggle. They just look like they struggling together and one of them going to pull the other one down. <laughs> well, what had happened was Leo let her know. I read that book. And, of course, Dollar gets all in her feelings and she told him, you know, oh, so oh, that's, oh, that's why you ain't returning my calls and my texts, man. He said, no, no, no. He said, I don't give a rat say about your past. He said, I really, really don't. And he knows he's he's a recovering dad in his yeah. Been there, done that, wrote, wrote the book about it. I'm cool with your past. I accepted that when I accepted the fact that I wanted to get in a relationship with a recovering addict. Cool. Boom. He said, but what I'm not cool with is your present and possibly your future. And he said, you're two seconds away from a relapse. Now, a whole lot of people last week did not like how Leo was dealing with her the week before that. Mm -hmm. When he was talking to her, when she went to him to kind of vent about what was going on at her job and what had happened with that book being turned upside down on, on her desk. He had encouraged her then to go and you need to seek your um, your sponsor. You need to talk to your... Yep. And she was like, I'm not weak. That right there, I told you I'm pissed y'all off. <laughs> but because I know addicts, that right there let me know right there she was round the corner from a freaking relapse. In yep. her mind, I'm not saying physically she wants to, but right there. Because you get mad because someone encourages you to protect yourself Self, in a yeah. vulnerable situation. You are on your way to a small, uh, uh, <laughs> shoot, I can't talk tonight, a freaking fast fall. And I said, okay, it's about to come. A whole lot of people was like, Leo, he was he was wrong. He was abrasive. Let me, let me kick it to you like this. Give it to him. When you're dealing with an addict, and I'm talking about something that I know, it ain't nothing I wrote a book about. This is something that people can't teach you. You just got to learn, learn it along the way. You are dealing with two individuals in one body, if you're lucky. Hmm. If you're dealing with people with mental illness, then you deal with that person you know, that addiction, and that mental illness. But at least you're dealing with two people. And at any given moment, you got to treat those two people differently. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, he knew that he was dealing with the addict. Mm -hmm. And he knew that he had to speak to that addict in a different tone and in a different way than he would speak to Dollar. Mm -hmm. Dollar could could use a little smoothing over. It's going to be okay. Thank you for telling me and trusting me with this. But he knew what he saw. Mm -hmm. So he encouraged her. He was like, listen, you need, you need you to call. Go to your, you need to go call your sponsor. Now. And that spirit was like... I'm strong. I'm not weak. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I know what I'm dealing with now because he don't trigger the, the spirit. Yep. Dollar is over in the back somewhere laying in the cut. The spirit <laughs> just spoke. Okay. So now this week, when she go over there, she speaks to him about this. And he told her, he said, you are two seconds away from a relapse. He I said, know I know what it. He said, like. I, he said, I done saw it. I've seen it. I've done it many times myself. You, and then when he asked her, when has the last time you spoken to your sponsor? Uh, 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 two weeks ago. I think she was lying there. I think she just said something just to say it, you know. Uh -huh. Just pulled it out of her head. And he, I know a whole bunch of people, and I ain't watching no reviews yet because I don't do that before I record myself. But I'm quite sure that a lot of people said him kind of walking away from the relationship probably pushed her into this next direction we are about to see happening. Mm -hmm. I disagree. And I disagree because of this reason. He told her, listen, I'm going to have to put pump the brakes on this relationship right now. And I will call you in a few days. That boy has to save himself. Mm -hmm. He can't he go. Said it. He said, I yes. need to protect my own sobriety. Yes. Yeah, he said it. If And the one thing about someone that is dealing with a illness such as addiction their manipulation game is on so many freaking points mm -hmm. that before you know it, they don't convince you to do it with them. Yep. And Leo knows because he's probably a master manipulator, his dad going to sell. Mm -hmm. But he's a little stronger right now. So he was like, I got to I gotta back up because he already don't told the spirit what it needs to do. And the spirit don't pretty much told him, buck off. 
<laughs> so now he knows that he can't he can't deal with neither one. He can't deal with the spirit or dollar right so now. So in other words, he needs her to humble herself again. And yeah. and seek the help for herself. Mm -hmm. I don't think that he just pushed her out, out the door so her to just go to her own devices. Mm -hmm. But you can't want something for someone more than they want it for themselves. Yes. And I think that's why he told her, I'll call you in a couple of days. Yeah. He, I know he not going to just like totally detach from her. But one thing I did have against him was when he ignored her. When he when she was calling and texting. He should have He should have just came straight in. Yeah, he said that. Not trying to, you know, maybe he was trying to get his thoughts together. But at least he should have had communicated like, I got something going on, you know, with you and da 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 da. Because that could have sent her. Mm-hmm. Back into you know no excuse, especially because he said for someone that's dealt with what you're dealing with, I know you can't be okay right now. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. He should have. Sit up. He yeah. should have been a little easier to deal with yeah. because you can relate. Or he could have texted her back. I'm busy. I can't get with you right now. He didn't necessarily had to deal with her about the book at the point. At yeah. the point. You know, but at least acknowledge that I got your text or I got your calls. Yeah. Don't just ignore me. So, the next thing we see, Blue was trying to get in touch with his mama so that he could say his good nights. You know, they have a routine. He says mm -hmm. his good nights to his mom and, you know, they say what they need to say. Dollar was looking real blank. Mm -hmm. Like, she was out there. Yeah, that look in her she eyes. She had that look in her eyes like it's about to happen. And if you don't hurry up and talk to somebody or go into a safe place, mm -hmm. it's about to happen. Well, Blue... Being the kid that he is, he didn't do anything wrong, but he was bragging about Disha and Shawa. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I think after that was heard, everything else was like, wah, 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 wah. Because she was wah, like, wah, yeah, wah, wah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised that Blue didn't pick up on because she like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was just old monotone, like, it, it okay, was, are, you like, are you done? Yeah. So later on in the episode, Ralph Angel was trying to get in touch with Dollar mm -hmm. because he, he had, felt someone right. He felt it, and he yeah, because he had invited Dollar to come over there to the celebration that they was giving Charlie. He felt like someone right, and I knew it was his spirit telling him that because Dollar usually doesn't really show up to things unless blue. There's like an exchange of blue yeah. to be done. So her not being there wasn't really a trigger for him, but he felt something. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to get in touch with her, and there's nothing. She's going, he's going, she's going straight to voicemail, blah, blah, blah. Next thing we just see, Dollar is facing eye to eye with a liquor bottle. Yep. I ain't never seen this kind of look in my life, but... I don't know what it was. She's looking but, at it. It's wrapped in the brown paper bag. Mm -hmm. she's she smelling grabs it. it. She takes the, the top off, and she's smelling it. And then she puts it down, and I'm like, girl, girl, throw it outside. Throw it, outside. throw it up against the wall, break it down, Put break it, it down, do toilet, something. Do something. Get it, get it, get it out of your house. Because you are not strong enough to tell, to, to, no. Yeah, because that probably was going to lead into a real addiction. Mm -hmm. So, it looks like she didn't probably do it that night we hope so we hope not but the fact that she has gone and purchased it yeah like but I that said, further confirms what leo he was, was trying to say to her yeah was like this book and especially like he said because he told her he said if my information was out here on front street like yours okay. he said he said matter of fact he said i know i would have relapsed so in other words he probably was telling her that you better than me right now because you haven't relapsed but before you do Get the help. Get that skit together. Yeah. So, as much as I don't like Dollar, I don't want her to, to read. I don't want I really, no, really, I really don't. don't. And it looks like next week something is about to happen. Yeah, because I'm by Carl Ralph over there. And say you need, need to, to come get over here. here. So, I don't know if she... I hopefully this Dollar called by and said, I need help. I yeah. need help. And she called Ralph. Or, I hope that they didn't find her at some place. And oh, yeah. For the sake of Blue... Yeah. Lord have mercy. For the sake of all of them, because they don't they don't need We no, need a win. We don't need no more fires. No new fires. We need to put the ones out that's already still lit. So all of y'all that be mad would be about dollar. I told you. When I see what I see, you can't change what I see. <laughs> and who and whoever's writing these parts for dollar. They on point. Whoever trained her 
y'all y'all doing that yeah because she's very when i can see it <laughs> it, it is not really her yeah that's not hope not anyway no. um yeah it's 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 real yeah so this was a good episode man it, it, was, it really was draining good. as hell right? it was yeah like, it was draining but like i told y'all Ernest died episode one <laughs> yep so we need to just buck so up got and food, shut up got food right out the right the gate right <laughs> out the gate so we just need to shut up about it and just <laughs> <laughs> Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. To uh, to that. Holla. Holla.